Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this screencast in which I am going to introduce you to the concept of duration of a bond. And very simply stated, the duration of a bond is its effective maturity. Intuitively, it tells us the amount of time it is going to take us to recover the price of the bond. For the purpose of computing duration, what we need to do is to find out the weighted average of maturities of what? of the cash payments associated with the bond. Let us assume a bond that pays us annual coupon payments and it has two more time periods remaining to mature. The question that we need to ask ourselves is when do the cash payments from this bond mature? And the obvious answer is that the first payment matures at the end of the first period and the second payment matures at the end of the second period. At the end of the first period, we get the first payment that is the coupon amount and at the end of the second period, we get the final payment comprising of the coupon amount and also since the bond is maturing, its face value. So what we need to do is to take the weighted average of these times. Which times? Time 1 and time 2. But since we are supposed to take a weighted average, we need to first of all establish what is the weight. And the weight is simply equal to the present value of the cash flows which cash flows? The cash flow occurring at the end of the first period, this one, and the cash flow occurring at the end of the second period, which is this one. We take the present value of both these cash flows and then divide these present values by the price of the bond, which if it is available to us directly, we can use it. Otherwise, we can find out the price of the bond from the data available to us. So that at the end of the first period then what we can do is we can write our uh, term as 1 signifying the end of the first time and we need to multiply this by the present value, present value of the cash flow. I am using the letters CF for cash flow and in the subscript I am writing the digit 1 to signify that this is the cash flow occurring at the end of time period 1 and what I am going to do is now divide this by the price of the bond which I am writing as B0. So that is the term that I am going to write for my first period. Similarly, what I can do at the end of the second time period is that I can write 2 for second time period and then I am going to multiply this by the present value of cash flow occurring at the end of the second time period and I am going to divide this by the price of the bond B0. And then there is only one more step left and that is to take the sum of both these terms and once we have added these terms, we are going to get the duration of the bond. Uh, 